What is the Whole30 diet and is it good for you? Let's science it. This is Nourishable and I'm Dr. Lara. Whole30 is a 30 day long program that serves as a nutritional reset. The Whole30 diet eliminates all added sugars, grains, legumes, dairy, seed oils, and alcohol. And what this leaves is a diet that's based on fruits, vegetables, meat, fish, and healthy fats like olive oil. No calorie counting or portion sizing necessary. The creators of Whole30 promote it as a paleo-inspired elimination diet that helps you identify your food sensitivities and recalibrates your relationship with food for life. Whole30 claims to improve health by rebalancing hormones, enhancing immune system function, and healing digestive issues, all typically accompanied by weight loss. The 30-day diet is very restrictive compared to the standard American diet, or SAD as they abbreviate it. That's pretty accurate. By eliminating added sugars, grains, legumes, dairy, and seed oils, you're avoiding most processed food. Outside of the food, Whole30 guides you to eat mindfully by avoiding distracting screens, skip weighing yourself, and advises against recreating desserts with compliant ingredients because they're psychologically treats. No paleo brownies. After the 30-day elimination diet is the reintroduction phase. You'll slowly reintroduce food groups as a self-experiment to see if you're sensitive to so-called less than healthy ingredients, such as grains and legumes. From then on, you're encouraged to eat Whole30 ish for the rest of your life, and to do another strict round of Whole30 if you feel you need another nutritional reset. What is the research on the Whole30 diet? This specific diet hasn't been directly studied outside of company surveys, but since there are many similarities between Whole30 and the Paleo diet, we can look to Paleo diet studies to gain some insight. A 2015 meta-analysis pooled together four different studies comparing the Paleo diet to national nutrition guidelines. The Paleo diet showed greater reductions in waist circumference, blood triglycerides, blood pressure, and body weight, all changes in the direction that reduced disease risk. However, all these studies were pretty short, so it's not known whether this restrictive Paleo diet could be sustained. In my nourishable interpretation of Whole30, I found that there were some factors I agreed with, some I disagreed with, and some big questions that can't be addressed without direct research. Here are five factors I agreed with. Eliminating added sugars. Regular consumption of foods high in added sugars displaces other more healthful nutrients and can lead to insulin resistance, contributing towards type 2 diabetes. Eating a variety of fruits and vegetables. Variety is exciting for your palate and beneficial for your health because you'll get a full spectrum of nutrients. I also support their guidance towards eating whole fruits and vegetables rather than juicing to get that full fiber punch. Focus on healthy fats like olive, avocado, and fish oils. Monounsaturated fats in olive oil and avocados and omega-3 fats in fish decrease the bad LDL cholesterol, which reduces the risk of cardiovascular disease. Emphasis on home cooking. Since Whole30 is so restrictive, it eliminates most processed food, requiring you to cook whole foods at home. Developing the habits of meal planning, grocery shopping, and home cooking are a solid investment in your health. Mindful eating. Focusing on eating in the absence of screens helps prevent overeating. I liked the post-Whole30 guidance towards making conscious and deliberate choices to indulge only on special, culturally significant food. Yes, I will eat cheesecake on my birthday, but those donuts in the conference room aren't special enough for me to indulge. However, there were three main issues that I disagreed with. First, Whole30 is proposed in part as an elimination diet to help you identify your food sensitivities. But if you suspect that you may be sensitive to gluten, this Whole30 method won't offer clarification. Testing for gluten sensitivity requires that you've been eating gluten prior to a blood test and possibly an intestinal biopsy. I'd recommend seeking out a gastroenterologist and a registered dietitian nutritionist to help sort out a potential gluten sensitivity. Second, I disagree with the elimination of seed oils and the over-reliance on saturated fat. Diets high in saturated fat increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, and this risk can be decreased when the saturated fats are replaced with polyunsaturated fats, such as those found in soy and canola oil. But these seed oils aren't allowed on Whole30. I'm also concerned that it'd be really easy to overconsume saturated fat through meat, ghee, and coconut oil. 
current dietary guidelines recommend max 10% of daily calories from saturated fat. And this works out to just under two tablespoons of coconut oil per day on a standard 2,000 calorie diet. Third, although there's no harm in going 30 days without eating grains or legumes, I'm worried that eliminating them for a month would forever demonize these food groups, even if you're not sensitive to them. Whole grains and legumes are very healthy for most people and should join fruits and vegetables as the foundation of a healthy diet. And this brings me to my two big questions. Does this elimination diet with a loosely structured reintroduction phase truly identify food sensitivities? There's nothing worse than investing a whole bunch in a big experiment and then getting inconclusive results. If you suspect you have food sensitivities, I'd recommend seeking out a registered dietitian nutritionist so you can have professional guidance through an elimination diet. Most importantly, what happens after 30 days? Is this really long enough to develop lasting healthy habits? There are so many restrictive diets out there that are effective for short-term weight loss, but they all cause rebounds because they're not sustainable. I worry that constant cycling through rounds of Whole30 would perpetuate a yo-yo in health. Life is a marathon, not a sprint. My nourishable conclusion. I'm confident that switching from the standard American diet to Whole30 for a month will yield short-term health benefits, but I'm concerned that framing it as a 30-day reset will intensify yo-yoing. The changes that last are the changes that matter. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all things nutrition.